afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen. How is everybody doing today? I hope you are all doing well, guys. I hope you had a very easy time with the lesson yesterday. I hope everything made sense to you in that packet. Uh, wasn't too confusing. Uh, you didn't have any questions or anything like that. If you did, uh, you can reach out to me at any time, guys. Uh, but make sure you reach out to me during my office hours. Uh, that'll be the easiest time to get a hold of me. But you can ask questions and send me emails at any time, and I will respond as quickly as I can. So today is an A day. Today is a review lesson, and we are going to take a look at uh, a closer look at um, a couple of the ideas we got from that packet. Um, where the review today is going to kind of focus on growing nationalism and sectionalism. Um, I am going to basically kind of try to reiterate a couple ideas, uh, mainly from the Google form that I asked you on Thursday. And um, I'm going to show some examples of some good, correct answers, just so you guys have an idea of ways you could have answered uh, that Google form. So just as a reminder, just so you guys know, my office hours are from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. today. So just as a reminder today, guys, I want you to please make sure that you watch today's teacher message video, the uh, video that I'm recording right now. So if you heard me say that, that means that you are watching it. You are already all set and you have completed the first bullet point of this slide. The other thing I would want, I would like you to do is to please make sure you have watched the teacher lesson video on the Google Slides from April 20th from yesterday. Please make sure you have completed the check for learning on the slides from April 20th. Uh, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Make sure you get those two things done, guys, from, excuse me, from yesterday so that you can have full credit for the lesson and everything else. Uh, if you're curious, if you're missing anything or anything like that, guys, let me know. Shoot me an email, ask me a question, and I'll make sure I get back to you. So what I wanted to spend the last couple minutes talking about in today's video, guys, is just going over um, going over uh, the couple of questions that I had in that Google form last week on Thursday. So the first question I had was, according to the packet, what did the Monroe Doctrine say? And I have a few examples. I have three examples uh, that were very good answers uh, that you guys submitted. And I wanted to kind of give you guys a shout out. And those of you that did a good job, I wanted to make sure that I gave you guys a shout out, let you know that you did a good job. So the first answer I want to read is actually from Taylor Mitchell. He says, the United States would intervene in Latin American affairs when America's security was at risk. He pulled that straight from the document. He pulled that straight from the packet. Um, and that was the exact answer. Uh, that was the answer that best fit uh, answered that question. So that was a perfect response, a perfect answer. Great job, Taylor. The second answer that I saw that I thought was really, really good was from Chelsea Gay. Uh, the Monroe Doctrine stated that the United States would view any European attempts to further colonize the Americas as dangerous to our peace and safety. So that is basically a translation and an overall message of what the Monroe Doctrine was about. It was basically telling European countries to stay out of the Americas because the United States didn't want them interfering in uh, anything that was going on in the Americas because the United States would take that as a threat. It would, they would see it as dangerous to our peace and our safety. Uh, even though that wasn't in the packet itself, that still was a very good answer, and Chelsea did a great job uh, finding that answer. The last answer I want to discuss actually comes from Jazzy Dennis, which actually really, really goes in depth uh, about what the Monroe Doctrine was about. She says the Monroe Doctrine had two major points, that the United States would not allow European countries to start new colonies or to interfere with independent countries in the continents of North and South America, and number two, that the United States would not interfere with existing European colonies nor get involved with conflicts between European countries. That is the best description of what the Monroe Doctrine said and what the Monroe Doctrine was. Um, the easiest answer is that the United States would intervene in Latin American affairs when America's security was at risk. But the last answer from Jazzy was probably the best answer that I received um, in that Google form. So great job on that one, Jazzy. 
So that basically sums up what the Monroe Doctrine was about and what the goal of the Monroe Doctrine was about. So if you said anything like this, um, you pretty much got it right. What I want you guys to do, I want you to check your emails. I did um, submit those Google Forms and kind of send those Google Forms back to you with comments. Don't worry about the grade, guys. I did not actually grade it. Um, I mainly had to put a grade in there just so that I could send it back to you and so that you guys could read the comments. Uh, the, each question was worth zero points, so it's not actually worth anything. Um, that is going, that Google form is going to factor in to the overall grade that you will receive on school tool. Um, depending on the accuracy of your answers and depending on the, um, the, and whether you did it or not, that's going to decide whether you get a zero, one, two, or three. Um, not just the Google form guys. Uh, if you remember from yesterday's video, you have to open the slides, you have to do the Google form. You have to do any homework that there might be, and you have to, do it to the best of your ability and get it as, make it as correct as you can. That's how you earn a one or two or a three. You earn a three by getting everything right and opening everything. You get a two by um, completing everything and a one by looking at the Google Slides and then a zero for doing nothing. So make sure you are doing that. But the point is, I wanted to just let you know that even though it says a zero out of zero on it, uh, you still are going to uh, get credit for that, and that will go toward your grade for this particular lesson. So don't freak out about the fact that you got a zero out of zero. That zero out of zero doesn't mean anything. Okay, so now that I've kind of touched on that, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, second question that I asked you in this Google form. What was the Missouri Compromise? Um, and Probably the most direct answer was from Aiden Beckstead. It was an agreement that settled the conflict over Missouri's application for statehood. So if you said something like that, you were spot on, you were perfect. I gave you credit for that. I told you you did a great job. The second answer that I got that uh, went into a little more detail and was a little more specific about what the Missouri Compromise was came from Haley Love. And her answer was, it said that Missouri entered the Union as a slave state and Maine entered as a free state. And that was the agreement, that was the compromise that Congress came up with to kind of keep that balance between slave states and free states in, uh, in Congress. So great job, Haley. The last one actually comes from Corey, Corey Monticelli. And it was an agreement that settled the conflict over Missouri's application for statehood, also entered the Union as a slave state, and Maine entered as a free state, which kept equal balance. Uh, ah, there we go. Yes, I see. So I just did. Sorry about that, guys. So an agreement that settled the conflict over Missouri's application for statehood, Missouri also entered the Union as a slave state, and Maine entered as a free state, which kept equal balance. So that is exactly what that was. One last part of the Missouri Compromise that nobody mentioned um, was that the Missouri Compromise made sure that um, all states south of the southern border of Missouri would be slave states, and all states north of the southern border of Missouri would be free states. So that was the other part of the Missouri Compromise as well. So those were the couple of main ideas that I wanted you to guys to get out of that uh, April 16th lesson. Um, if you have any questions, if you're curious about anything, uh, curious about any comments I may have made on that Google form, please get back to me. Please reach out to me. Uh, as a reminder, my office hours are from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. If you have any questions, please ask. With that said, guys, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Please make sure you are able to complete uh, your lesson from April 20th. That is going to be the first lesson that is going to be posted into School Tool and be part of your grade. So please make sure you go ahead and you complete all parts of that and you're doing your best on that lesson. With that said, guys, have a fantastic rest of your day. I will see you tomorrow.